The Head Graphene 360 Instinct Mid Plus is touted as one of the fastest rackets on the market, allowing you to whip winners from pretty much anywhere on court. But is it really all that versatile? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Zach, Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game with science. And oh man, is it windy today. However, you know what they say, the tennis gear reviews must go on. I literally don't know anybody that says that actually. And welcome back to the search for a new tennis racket using real data as well as playability. And as a former tennis instructor and current physician and medical researcher, I've become obsessed with finding the best, most objective tests to put tennis rackets, shoes, and gear through to see how they really compare against each other on court. Specifically today with the suicide test, serve test, side-by-side -side test, and of course, play test. So let's start with the head Graphene 360 Instinct Mid Plus. That is a mouthful. I've got this thing strung up with Syngut at 56 pounds, same as my current racket, the RF97. Remember, this is the control racket throughout the series for the new racket search. So the swing weight of the Instinct is 314, which is actually a little lower than some heavier players' rackets. Well, this frame still retains some muscle with an 11.2 ounce strung weight, but let's see how that, combined with a 100 square centimeter hoop, translates into maneuverability with the suicide test. We're gonna start from behind the baseline, more defensive balls, moving into approach shots, and then volleying, and then coming back off our back foot to hit more and more defensive shots. Now what's odd is this racket is only four points head light. However, it feels feather light when transitioning from the baseline up to the mid court to hit more approach shots and then up to transition for volleys. And as you can see, when my weight was moving forward, I was hitting a really clean ball. But moving backwards, I'm having to swing quite a bit harder because of the low swing weight to get the same amount of oomph on the ball, in contrast to something with a higher swing weight that would kind of be helping me out here. For the side-by-side -side test, I'm calculating my average miles per hour on forehands and backhands between the Instinct and my current rack at the RF97. My average ground stroke speed in the head instinct was 57.3 miles per hour, whereas the RF97 was 57.8 miles per hour. So really not a lot of statistical significance there between the two rackets, whereas the RF97 there's more mass coming through the ball, and on the head instinct you can just whip through the ball faster, so just kind of pick your poison what you like. And as you can see, I'm really able to get my arm through the ball on this racket. And with the lower stiffness rating, as long as I'm setting up properly, this racket is almost just doing the work for me. It also feels great on my arm. Sometimes when I'm doing these racket reviews, I'm hitting a lot of balls in the ball machine. My arm can start to feel really tired, but not with this frame. Now, like I said, this frame really moves fast through the air. However, you better have a loose arm and a really consistent follow through, because if your arm starts to tighten up, you might start to lose a lot of control with this racket. Now, when I was being pushed wide, I found that this frame, unlike some heavier, more demanding rackets, was really easy to whip around and get the ball back deep to get back into a point. I just found that so useful when I was being put on defense. But on the flip side of that, sometimes I found myself losing pace with this frame. And that's because with the low stiffness rating and 100 square centimeter hoop, sometimes it was just hard to find my range. And so inadvertently, I actually ended up started pushing a little bit because the racket was just giving me too much in terms of a trampoline effect. And sometimes this racket had a hard time handling pace from my opponent, whereas some other heavier, more stout frames can absorb that pace and use it in a more productive way. And in contrast to that, the instinct can become just a little unsteady. However, I found if my contact point was consistent, I was able to redirect that pace a little better. However, that's pretty good advice for any racket you pick up. Now, I have read several articles stating that this racket is not good for people with long strokes, but I tend to disagree. I think if you hit with a lot of topspin, this frame works, especially with a 16 by 19 pattern. However, if you hit more of a flat ball or you don't have that consistent read your watch follow through or Nadal type follow through, yeah, you might end up losing a little bit of control with it. But really, I don't think it comes down to how long your stroke is. I think it comes down to how aggressive your follow through is. What I think I like most about this stick is the ease of creativity with it. Now we saw this a little bit with the suicide test, but if you see here, having to switch from a two-hander to a slice, just because of wind and abnormal pace, it was really easy to switch grips and improvise. Now I think that's gonna give players a huge confidence boost, knowing you can kind of change the flight path of this racket really quick and easy. Now up at net, the instinct is a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. When I was forced to make a quick stab or just a reaction volley, I had an excellent experience with this racket. Same as on my backhand volley, which is technically a lot better than my forehand volley, where there I was having a little bit more trouble with it. So I think the main takeaway up at net is if you have consistent compact technique, this racket's gonna feel pretty good up there. However, if you have a little bit more of a loose arm, you like to swing through your volleys, maybe look somewhere else. 
And speaking of feel, remember, there's a big difference between how a racket feels in your elbow, your arm muscles, and your shoulder, and how a racket feels when hitting the ball itself. This racket, unlike some heavier player's racket, does not have that surgical precision feel on the ball. However, it does just have an excellent feeling on your arm. And you're not gonna have that shock and awe on your arm that you will with some other rackets, but you're also not gonna have that surgical precision that those other rackets do. So there is some trade-offs there. And so for the play test specifically, I know we still have the serve test to go, I would really consider this racket in the comfort category. It's not a surgical weapon that some heavier players rackets are. It's also not a missile launcher either. It kind of fits right in the middle of those two categories. And for a lot of players, that's actually a pretty good compromise to make. My average flat serve miles per hour on the head instinct was 90.3 miles per hour. Compare that to the RF-97 at 88.1 miles per hour. Just shows you when you're hitting the center of the string bed on that 100 square centimeter hoop with a little bit of a thicker beam, really starts to rock it off the racket. But then contrast that with the slice serve average, the instinct was only 68.3 miles per hour, whereas the RF-97 was 70.1 miles per hour. Not surprising because the RF-97 just has a bigger swing weight, a little more mass, so those slice serves are just getting a little bit more weight behind them versus the lighter instinct. But during the serve spin test, the head instinct got a whopping 107.3 centimeters of kick serve height versus the RF-97 at only 97 centimeters. And a couple reasons for that. Number one, the instinct is so easy to whip around behind your head and get a good kick. Number two, 16 by 19 string pattern and 100 square centimeter head just equals a lot of topspin that you have access to during your kick serve. And of course, I had to make mention of the new technology in this racket in the form of Graphene 360 Plus. Now, head has graphene in the head and shaft of the racket. Now, they claim that these fibers help stop the frame from deforming as much on impact with the ball. It also gives you a little bit better energy transfer and maneuverability. Now, the plus in Graphene 360 Plus stands for that spiral fiber technology that they have at around five and seven on the frame, the two south poles of the hoop. Now, they claim that these twisted fibers give you a little bit more resistance to deform when it hits the ball like just the graphene does, as well as it gives you a little bit more flex and a cleaner feeling. Now, I have tested the graphene 360 and 360 plus throughout the years, and I've found that both rackets do hit clean. I haven't noticed a big difference between the 360 and 360 plus though. All right, so some recommendations just from my experience. If I were gonna buy this racket, what would I do to customize it? I think number one, I would add some mass to the throat. I'd add some lead to the throat just so I wouldn't be getting pushed around by some heavier balls. So what players do I think the head instinct is good for and who do I think it's not so good for? Well, if you're looking for access to spin and comfort on your arm, this is definitely one to try out. If you want more mass behind the ball and to hit a heavier ball, you might wanna look for something a little more stout. Now, if you're looking to make the switch to a bigger hoop, but don't want a sledgehammer, this is also a great racket to try. And most importantly, if you are a creative player looking for a racket that allows you to improvise on the court, this is a must play test for you. And as far as where does this racket sit on the search for my new racket power rankings, for me, I would say I love the forgiveness and the spin of this racket. I think if I could customize it a little bit, I think I would really like it. However, we still got a lot of rackets to go. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the instinct. Let me know what your experience has been or if you think this is a frame you'd like to try. And so until the next shoe, string, or tennis racket, hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. I hope this wind does not find its way to you. I'll see you next time.